Ukrainian Defense Forces struck the Kanskaya Air Base in the Russian Republic of Adegi overnight on October the 9th, targeting 57 warplanes and helicopters, according to NV sources. The airport housed both training and combat aircraft, including Su-34, 12 aircraft, Diamond DA-42, 2 aircraft, L-39, 37 aircraft, Su-35S, 4 aircraft, Mi-8, two helicopters. The exact number of destroyed and damaged aircraft is still being determined, according to the NV source. Sources within the Ukrainian Defense Forces also reported that the attack was carried out by drones from the SBU Security Service, the main intelligence directorate and the Special Operations Forces of Ukraine. Following the strike, a large fire and detonations occurred at the airbase. The Kanskaya airbase, located in Krasnodar Krai, about 450 kilometers from the front line, is used by the Russian military for refueling and conducting missile and bomb strikes against Ukraine. Additionally, NV's source reported that overnight on October the 19th, drones from the SBU, Special Operations Forces of Ukraine, Armed Forces and Special Operations Forces struck a warehouse of Shahed drones near Yeysk. Several powerful blasts were recorded, leading to a fire and subsequent detonations at the drone storage site. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine confirmed earlier on October the 10th the strike on the Russian military airbase in the vicinity of the village of the Kanskaya near Makop in Adigay. The statement noted that an ammunition depot was hit, resulting in a fire. Andriy Kovalenko, the head of the Center for Countering Disinformation at the National Security and Defense Council, reported that a fuel depot at the airbase was destroyed. The airfield is located near the village of Kanskaya, close to the region's capital city of Makop and roughly 430 kilometers from the front line. The Kanskaya airfield is home to Russia's 272nd Training Aviation Regiment. Russia uses the airbase for refueling and to support airstrikes against Ukrainian military positions and population centers. Ukraine has carried out a number of strikes against airbases and other military facilities in an effort to weaken the more powerful Russian Air Force and curb Moscow's ability to launch devastating aerial attacks against Ukrainian cities. Russian President Vladimir Putin is facing a serious shortage of manpower in his army. Now both Russia and Ukraine are forced to find new resources to continue fighting and the prospects for ending the conflict remain illusory, writes Newsweek. Since February 2022, Russia has suffered more than 665,000 casualties, with more than a thousand Russian soldiers killed or wounded every day alone. Although Moscow does not provide detailed information on its losses, the Russian side regularly reports a significant number of Ukrainians killed and wounded, more than a thousand daily. Accurate battlefield casualty figures are difficult to verify. However, the British government says Russian casualties are approaching 648,000. William Freer, a research fellow at the UK Centre for Geostrategy, 
notes that both Russia and Ukraine are facing a shortage of human resources. He stresses that after ammunition, the most important factor in a war of attrition is replacement. According to the UK Ministry of Defense, Russia suffered its biggest monthly losses in September and the rising casualty rate is expected to continue until the end of the year despite the winter period. As the war continues, Russia is forced to find new ways to fill its ranks. The Kremlin hopes to make voluntary enlistment more attractive, but also has unpopular options such as sending conscripts to Ukraine or declaring a new wave of mobilization. Russia uses several sources to recruit its military. These include regular conscripts, contract soldiers, reservists, as well as mercenaries such as the Wagner Group fighters and foreigners who join the war in exchange for high salaries and citizenship. Mobilization remains a sensitive issue for Putin. Despite announcing a call for 133,000 new recruits in the autumn draft, a significant number of draft-age men have left the country to avoid service. Last year, the Kremlin introduced new rules allowing summonses to be sent electronically, a move that helps combat draft evasion. Increasing financial incentives has become one of the main methods of attracting new soldiers. For example, Moscow allocated 90 billion rubles for payments to contract soldiers in order to recruit an additional 225,000 fighters. The Kremlin may find itself having to draw troops from wealthier regions, which could lead to political tensions. Freer notes that a fall 2022-style remobilization could seriously damage Putin's reputation. Military counterintelligence expert Mikhail Pritula told what a new mobilization in the Russian Federation might be like. According to him, the Russian Federation is losing 40,000 fighters per month. But if mobilization is announced in Russia, they will try not to touch Moscow and St. Petersburg. 